What's going on everybody? So today I decided to take another crack at fixing the 86. I emailed a couple people and it turns out that because these are inverted mono tubes, like I said in my last video, they do need to be re-greased periodically because it's a race car part. First off, this is a PSA if you're thinking about getting inverted mono tubes, think twice. Not all are created equal. These white line aka AST coilovers, uh, they are known and notorious for running out of grease early and they'll ruin the bushings if you don't catch it in time and uh, essentially you're going to require a rebuild once a season which to be honest is crazy. I can't say I would recommend these to somebody for that reason uh, unless you're willing to take it apart and re-grease them. So I've already done one side that way I actually know what's going on and I can kind of explain it better uh, and let's hop over there and take a look at this strut right now and I'll show you. This is actually what the inverted monotube looks like. It's actually just a regular strut flipped upside down and this is this is the portion right here that actually slides up and down in the cartridge. Uh, I don't know what you actually call this. I call this a cartridge. This, this actually would be considered a cartridge. Uh, this would be the strut housing actually. Uh, so this is a, an insert almost. Um, so this is your strut housing. These are your springs, top hat, right? Your adjuster goes down here, teeny tiny bump stop. What happens is inside here, those two black rings, that's where grease goes. What'll happen is, as this sits inside, uh, it'll actually bind up and get slightly off because the grease itself, uh, unfortunately, acts as a bushing. It's a real good design feature. And uh, if there's not enough grease, you essentially don't have your bushing and it'll bind up, which in theory is what causes that popping noise that I heard in that last video. Um, I'm hoping I'm hoping this fixes it, so let's uh, put this back together. You want to pack these rings full of grease, throw a light coat of grease on this, and hopefully that does it. So, fingers crossed, and uh, hopefully this video will end up with a thumbs up. Let's put this back together. So as you can see in here, I've packed the grease. This is just cheap Molly grease from, you know, O'Reilly's or AutoZone. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. Um, you could use a higher temp like wheel bearing grease from Redline. Um, but I didn't have that available local to me. I just went to the store yesterday and got stuff, but uh, that's basically what you want. You want a nice good pack of grease in there. I need to get a little bit more in the bottom rung because unfortunately what happens is this gets pushed out over time because these bushings aren't tight enough of a fit. Uh, so on a, on a maybe a higher quality shock, this isn't an issue, but unfortunately an issue on this one. So two things real quick. There's a 19 millimeter on the bottom. You can access this after you take off the adjuster, which just takes a two millimeter Allen. And you pop this off, and this is standard threads, but the strut itself threads in reverse. So that's just something to keep in mind. And when you take this apart, just make sure you take the tension off of uh, your springs. Put a thin coat of grease. I was a little bit more liberal probably than you need to be on these, but honestly, I don't want to find out the hard way again. And fingers crossed, this does fix it. Taking the struts out can be done with one person, but it's a little bit difficult. Would you say it's a little easier with two people? Oh yeah. So you insert it right here, but you want to be really careful about your dust seal right at the top to make sure it doesn't get deformed or anything. And can you verify it's come through? Yep. Okay, so this is reverse thread, so lefty-tighty, which is kind of awkward, right? You want to start this by hand before you get a wrench on it. You do not want to damage the threads down there, like, at all. Now, I couldn't find a specific torque setting on this, but uh, it's not tight, like, at all. It's just pretty much, uh, got what they say, like, quarter turn past tight. So, it's really not tight at all. And it's quite a long thread at the end, so it takes a little bit longer than you think to, to get the strut out, would you say? Yeah, it's with that fine thread. Yeah, it's fine thread. And I just took a simple measurement from the top of this collar here to the top, just so I could reset my ride height really easy. And that's it, that's enough. Okay. I'd like to just be able to align this tomorrow and be done with it. Can you hold that? When you take this adjuster off, there's a flat actually on the bottom. Could you uh, twist it over? And we'll reset. And this index is on with the flat, so it is actually pretty easy to, to get on there. Just make sure you tighten this enough, because you don't want it falling off. Yeah, 
that was a success. It looks like everything is working now. Uh, it just looks like they ran out of grease and they dried up, which kind of blows that you have to do that basically every probably six months, I'm guessing. Um, it was already making some clunking noises previously. So what that tells me is um, it was just, uh, it was already time. So six months, that's a pretty frequent service interval, I'm guessing, for pretty much most people. And the weird thing is those coilovers only had about 2,000 miles on them, 2,000. Granted, like 20 autocross days, but only 2,000 miles. Keep that in mind if you decide to buy inverted struts. Um, they sound really cool on paper, but uh, the unfortunate reality is that they don't work for a street car. Not unless they're designed properly for street use, because um, they're gonna clunk again in probably another 2,000 miles. So keep that in mind. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, it's time to autocross the car this weekend, which is rad. I have to go get it aligned tomorrow, or at least have them recheck the front, because we did take it apart, um, and it will shift around. But the Miata project is again postponed. I was gonna go work on it at Rockies tomorrow, but uh, he's got some stuff to take care of, so unfortunately that didn't line up, but I will get to it. Uh, till the next video. This is Sean with A Driver's Perspective.